Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is January the 13th, and we have a wonderful watch list, and I hope everybody got to watch our Sunday report yesterday because there's a lot of good trades in it. Miss Vegas? Yeah, good morning. Oh, sorry, good evening. It feels like morning because I just want to keep trading, but uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, so today we're going to talk about Tesla, Beyond Meat, Triple D, and NK. So I'm just going to get right into it. You know, uh, Tesla, you know, we had a very hard time with this stock on Friday. Uh, definitely, you know, I, I had lost money Friday because I had bought some calls, which unfortunately decayed and uh, unfortunately didn't do well Friday with the contracts I had that basically went to garbage, as in zero. Um, so I didn't do well there. So whoever was shorting it or bought puts did great. So congratulations to the bears on Friday. However, uh, Tesla, as you know, his net, uh, Elon Musk's net worth went up to $2.1 billion this past week, last week. According to Forbes magazine, Tesla is the highest valued car company. Uh, and then this morning we saw Tesla was, uh, Oppenheimer gave it a target of 612. Uh, also, there were some talks on CNBC. Jim Cramer talked about Tesla. He said that the t numbers will go up because of China's subsidy extension, which, by the way, Jim's mentioned on um, our videos before. And analysts need to raise their numbers on Tesla, which was mentioned also by Jim Cramer. Uh, the other thing, too, is Tesla today is up on the close to 10% on the day. That is a huge move on Tesla. So even though we didn't do well, I didn't do well on Friday because I had calls, uh, what I did do well is I actually took advantage of the pullback and said, you know what, I'm going to buy some option contracts for Monday or, you know, obviously this week. And I'm going to take advantage of the price that they've really shorted Tesla to the bone on Friday. So we took the 510 calls and we got those for $340 each. And you know what, that made up for all the pain on Friday because those 510 calls that we got on Friday for 340, some people paid 350. Some people got them for 370. Those today went to $2,274 for one contract. So almost $2,000 profit per contract, you know? So still holding the trade because I still want to see a continuation. And I'm going to turn it over now to Jim to talk about this beautiful move today on Tesla because you know, my dad called me today and I said, hey, dad, you know, Tesla's doing really well. He's like, what's what's happening? And I'm like, Tesla's at 512. He goes, what? And I said, yeah, 512. He couldn't believe it. And then wait till he sees the market report tonight. Uh, it's over at 525 currently after hours here. So, Jim, let's hear about Tesla because you've been, you know, teaching the bears quite a few things lately. Oh, let's yeah. Hear it. Yeah. And again, uh, it had a price target raised today to six hundred and twelve dollars and that was by Oppenheimer and he was on CNBC today talking about it at power lunch but the uh, so the new you know and I got it four years ago I called a um, six hundred dollar strike on this and I think by 2020 and I think I'm going to definitely hit it this year and that's pretty good you know pretty good prediction for four years ago when this thing was running around Oh, I think it was like 300. It was even under 300 when it did that, around 180-something, if I remember right. But we did pull back down there, and I'm going to show that on the yearly chart last year. We hit back down there at that 176, and we were calling this thing out in the room. And look at this stock. It's done nothing ever since he stopped tweeting on Twitter. That's this stock just has just turned around and here we are at an all-time high of 525.63 what a great trade vegas and i called this out in the in the video yesterday to go to 106 105 and that's what we saw so i'm just going to bring it up to the daily one five minute let's bring it up to the one minute well let's look at the five first we got a support level right here at 519.76 if the bears get a hold of it that's going to be a strong buy right there, right around the 519. And you're still going to have bears trying to attack it, but I think they've more or less have learned their lesson. So that 519.76 is going to be a real strong support. And I think your next one's going to be right up in here, right around the 523 area. 
somewhere in this vicinity right in here. So I'm going to bring this to a daily one minute and we're going to go right to it. This is the chart I usually use. So we got a resistance. First support is going to be a 519.76. The second support is going to be right here at 514. Six, was it 514.67? I'm going to turn that into a red line if it decides to knife back. And these are going to be real strong buys if we do hit these numbers. And then definitely that low, 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 low support is going to be down here at 509.70. The resistance that we needed to break was at 525.41. We closed at 524.86, so now the new high on it is 527.69. So let's take it to 530, and then that 550 mark, and that's going to be looking. I'll be looking at calls at 550 tomorrow for Tesla. I'm very bullish on this stock. I've been bullish ever since it was down at 50 bucks, and that's 10 years ago or even longer. But here we are now. We're at 527. I figure probably. I mean. Tesla has a lot of stuff going on. It has satellites in the air. We have spaceships. We have batteries. We have we have uh, um, shingles for uh, solar panels. I mean, it, and we have battery packs. This just this just ain't this ain't even halfway where it's going to end up here in five years. I'm figuring by five years we'll be above a grand or more, maybe higher than that. So this is Tesla. We need to break a resistance of 527.69 and pullback supports again will be 519.20 or no, let's go to here. It's 523.02. Let's put that in there. 523.02, 519.76, and then if it does knife hard, it'll be at the top of the ascending triangle breakout that we had right here at 519.76 and the next one is another one that we're really bullish on that some bears are still bearish but we've got some news on this one that's really going to catalyst make this a catalyst for this coming year and miss vegas that's bind b-y-n-d oh my gosh so you know beyond meets you know we talked about this too and i you know i gotta say uh, i've had so many thank yous that jim and i got today uh, from many people uh, about our video because it's really helping people plan their trades so the whole purpose of really doing the video is really to talk about the stock and give you supports and resistances in case you're interested to trade the stock, whether you're going to buy the stock or the option. So this is the whole purpose of the video. Um, but, you know, Beyond Meats, you know, want to mention a reminder that they do have plans to launch in China before the end of 2020. That is news that I we did have from back in November. Um, you know, and they did expand a partnership, if you guys recall, with Zanbergen World's Finest Meat, which is a new manufacturing facility in the Netherlands. And they're going to be apparently ready this quarter, 2020. It's going to mark Beyond Meat's first production capability outside the United States of America. So the fact that the consumer response in Europe has been very positive, I think we're going to be seeing a lot of uh customers that are going to be served with locally produced products and that are going to be obviously plant-based so this will be interesting because the finally they're going to get their you know global footprint with that strategic partnership in europe and the demand for plant-based products really does continue and i think that it's going to be quite interesting to hear more information about this um how that's going because you know we're supposed to hear something this quarter uh, nevertheless, though, we know that Beyond Meats was heavily, heavily shorted, and so we saw a huge squeeze. We also had a gap fill all the way to like 105, which we did mention as well in previous videos last week. And you know what? Beautiful, beautiful move today. I was really surprised to see how high it went. I really wasn't expecting it to go to like 110 plus, and wow, what a move, what an incredible move. And the other thing that I want to say is we did have the Beyond Meat $100 calls, which we bought last week. And uh, we got those calls really, really cheap um, in comparison to what the stock is trading at today. But, you know, the $100 calls um, today uh, went for 16, let me see here, hold on, uh, $1,675 each 
contract and people had those under I think around $200 some of them had them in the hundred and something dollar range on beyond meat calls for $100 strike so again those um, previously had closed around 286 on Friday just as a reminder on beyond meats $100 calls and now went all the way up to that $1,600 range. That is just an incredible move. So Jim, let's hear about Beyond Meats because I know you traded it and you were all over this. So let's hear what you have to say about Beyond Meat. Oh yeah, we knew it, we knew it was bullish um, due to the McDonald deal that they got. They added more stores up there in Canada to sell their burgers. And um, so we were bullish on it and I got in some calls on it friday and swung them for over the weekend and got out a little too soon today i got out on the breakout and then about halfway up this year you know i decided to go ahead and take my profit then we formed us what you would call a pennant flag right here it we just ran on up and then it started having lower highs and higher lows and we formed us a little pennant flag and then after that she kind of went diagonally for a while and then we went ahead and had another breakout on it. And she went ahead and run up right here with another ascending triangle. And I'm going to go pull this up, magnify it up a little bit, right in here. Then we had another little breakout right here. We had, you know, had it, it pulled back to that trend line that I had from the previous flag on that pennant flag. And then when we got in this one, it pulled back there. I blurted the room. I said, it's time that's going to start respecting this 9 EMA. And the chart that I'm using right now is a TTM squeeze with the 200, the 34, and the 9 EMA. And then she went ahead and bounced on up and pulled back and hit that trend line again. And that caused her to bounce. So, and then right into close, we had another flag right here. You can see where it, it had the tops right there and it fell, and it fell right back into that trend line. And then after hours, we broke out and we had a, a 117.90 high. So we're going to be bullish on this. I think we can take this back up to 120 easily tomorrow. If it does pull back, it'll probably pull back to this level right here. I mean, there's a couple spots in here. I'm going to take this out so I can see this better. Remove drawing. we got a support level right in here at 113.75. Whoops. Change that up. Magnify this right around here at the 113.84 area. That second support's gonna be here at 115.19. Then you got maybe another support right here at the 115.95 area. And then you got this after hours support, which it did pull back to a little bit right here at the 116.91. So, you know, I've been beating up on the bears on this one too. There's still some of them out there that still think that this is a piece of fake meat, which it is. <laughs> but, yeah, I like how you said that. Yeah, but I do believe low support's going to be right here at 113.84. Your second one's going to be here at 115.19, and that first one at 115.95. And it'll probably hover right here at 116.97 and break this resistance to 117.90. And I mean, this was really a great run today, really was. And this is going to put a little bit of scare into some of them bears. And if we can break that 117.82, we're going to start taking it up to dollar intervals, past 120, 121, 122. I'll be looking for patterns. I'll be looking for pullbacks. I called this out in the room right here at the 200 EMA. I said I was going to wait when it was up here. I noticed this lower high. And then I noticed the nine started curling down over the 34 and then we broke that trend line. And so I told the room, I'm going to wait till we hit the 200 and then I'm going to get back in this trade. Well, I don't know. I got deer in the taillights or something in the headlights. I just did not get into this trade. I don't know why, but I just watched it go up, just watched it go up. And, and, but that's part of trading, I guess. Next time I'll, I'll know, you know, momentum plays. It was beautiful. So supports again, 113.84, 115.19, 115.95, and then this 116.97 is a resistance 
and then that last resistance at 117.82 if we can break that we're going to go back up to 120 and then we'll take it dollar intervals after that and the next one we're going to talk about is triple d's well you know what another amazing call i you know i again i underestimate sometimes where these calls are going to go but i mean i really watched the money flow and i was watching triple d on friday and i actually called out on friday in particular a really really cheap option contract on triple d so the stock was trading uh just shy of ten dollars on friday and i saw the money flow coming in on triple d and then i looked at the weekly chart and uh what i did is i gave the alert on triple d and the alert on the triple d was the ten dollar strike for january 17 and to they were uh 24 dollars each contract that is a really good price and you know it was a swing trade so i wasn't expecting anything huge to happen well, boy, oh boy, like I said, momentum can really surprise you. And look at Triple D, what happened today on that stock. I mean, the stock went all the way up to 11.32. Even after hours, it's trading at 11.25. Those option contracts from $24 went all the way to $130 today. That is an amazing return, over $100 profit per contract and because it was so cheap a lot of people bought 10 and so people made a thousand dollars just on this trade so i'm loving to hear that even a small account 24 dollar investment you would have made a hundred dollars return because obviously it's 130 but you would have made your money back plus profit so that is an amazing return over 400 percent gains on triple d now why did triple d actually move well, that's a good point. So Triple D had some news and, you know, the news was that, um, you know, they're going to uh, do, they're getting involved in uh, biotech and they're teaming up with another company in Israel called Coal Plant Biotechnologies. And they're going to be using the former 3D printers and the proprietary, I guess what they call the human collagen bio ink technology to develop some tissue and scaffold bioprinting processes for some third party collaborators. So 3D definitely had a little bit of news, um, not nothing big because, you know, this was kind of like news, I think even from a week ago, but you know, sometimes it takes time for something like this to move and it looks pretty interesting. So I'm going to be watching triple D because you know, Jim, we've traded triple D before. Oh yeah. And so the fact that Triple D 3D Systems uh, has done really well uh, is not surprising at this point and definitely one that everybody should be watching because Triple D has also um, contracts with the with uh, the defense for the corrosion, right? So they have a product that can help alleviate corrosion. So um, definitely keep a watch on Triple D. Also, they had an upgrade today as well from Craig Halem, and they upgraded this to $14 on Triple D. So it did get a market upgrade as well. So, hey, you know what? Anything's possible, but keep a watch on these. All I know is definitely no luck, not holding these calls anymore because we were just happy to take the money on this overnight trade. And what a beautiful move it had uh, from Friday to today. So, Jim, let's hear about Triple D chart. Yeah, let's pull that baby up. But I, th I don't think that was petty news at all myself, but, you know. No. But the analyst that, that talked about it kind of thought it was. So I kind of called a wedge pattern on this the other day. It was back on uh, 1226, and I figured this thing was getting ready to break out with an ascending triangle. And let me show you that ascending triangle. And that's a much more powerful chart pattern than, than your wedge. And when you have <laughs> patterns like this, usually going to get a breakout and we had some couple double top here and then it pulled back real bad well it sold off on earnings earnings weren't too hot back about three quarters ago and ever since then it just sold off and it, it just couldn't break that resistance at 919 we did have a low down here at 647 and that's when i discovered that little wedge and i figured this may be about time that it's going to get ready to break out 
but uh, then we had that big gap up today, you know, from ten dollars all the way up to and what it, I can't remember what it opened at, but I'll show you here in a second. So yeah, I mean it it pre market it started running. It was down here at a ten oh two, and then it had just a beautiful run pre market, which gave identification that this baby was getting ready to break out some more. And once that bell rang, it hit up here about eleven twenty one, and then pulled back to that support level that we had here at ten sixty three, and that kind of hovered around just for three or four minutes, and then bam, she run up and hit a pivot point area, and that's where she kind of broke that area and then pulled back and hit it again right here. See where I had that previous high right here? That's where I drew that trend line. And then later on down the down the line, she went ahead and pulled right back there. And that 200 day followed up. And then we hit that 200 day. And here we are after hours at 11.25. It closed at 11.22. So I'm going to bring back this yearly chart. And I'm going to try to find some new resistances. So the next resistance is going to be right at well, look, we got that 1122. I'd say that next resistance is going to be right in this area, right in here. Let me draw that in there. Right at about 1140. And then I'll give you a couple supports. Where I, I always throw in supports because I like to play the pullbacks. We got 1140, and then we got another resistance up here around 1162, and then a large gap up to about 1214. So if this was petty news, we can expect it to pull back a little bit and low lower than 1063. I don't want to see it go down in this gap. I want to see that 1063 hold. So we're going to pull this back up to the daily one minute. And I'm going to turn this into a red line right here. And that's going to be my identification. If I if it does pull back in there, I'll probably swing or maybe just scalp this trade right here. So that first support level is going to be 1063. Your second one is going to be right up here at 1088. And then the third or the first one is going to be right here at, at 1104. You see, I didn't see this until I saw this. First I saw this, and then I looked over and I saw that. So that's a beautiful little support level. Pulled back and hit that 1104. And then we got a resistance that we need to break. It's going to be this 1130 area. If we can break past that, we'll get up to the newer highs. And I'll pull that chart up again. You can stop this video and, and copy and paste these charts and use them for your own personal reference. Just don't share them with anybody unless you tell them they come from I Love Stocks. But the low supports, 1063, 1088, 1104. The resistance to break is at 1130, 1140. And I'm going to pull up the 20 day and see if we can see it on the 20. Yep. 1140, 1162. Let me pull it up a year again. Magnify this. No. Nope. So we got the 1162, and then maybe if it decides to keep running, 1214. And that's going to be DDD. And then we got one more, and that's going to be NK that was halted right before close. Yeah, so you know what, NK is kind of trading around $5.75 here after hours. You know, it had a nice, very tight Bollinger Benz, uh, you know, low of the day was around 351 Then it popped to 820 and now it's kind of settled off and come down to like 576 right now. So, you know, NK had popped earlier in the day around the time that the CEO happened to be on Bloomberg TV. And he basically mentioned that there is the uh, they're having some treatment uh, for pancreatic cancer and that they had a complete response uh, as part of a small trial. So because he mentioned that on Bloomberg TV today, what ended up happening is the stock went actually parabolic for a bit. I mean, it went up practically, you know, over, you know, three dollars here and uh, four dollars a share and uh, now it's kind of calmed down so i think that would be fantastic to know that uh you know there's obviously going to be some more information from this uh but it did send the stock on a halt and uh again like i said it's pulled back um and keep this on watch because you know nk if they give more information on how this um pancreatic cancer treatment's going i mean this would 
I could just imagine this kind of stock, this kind of company, um, eventually having some sort of collaboration or some sort of merger acquisition down the road with another biotech company like a Pfizer that would want to do something with a company like this because we know how important a treatment or cure for pancreatic cancer. I mean, there's so many types of cancer, but pancreatic cancer is just one of those out there that there's not even any kind of um, treatments out there to even help you with the pain. And I can speak for this because I had a relative of mine very close to my family that unfortunately passed away on, with pancreatic cancer at a very young age of 56. And you know what, when she was going through that, there was no treatment, there's nothing they can do. And so the fact that there is some potential responses happening to some treatments in this uh, industry with pancreatic cancer in particular uh, is making me hopeful for other people that unfortunately may have to go through something like this in the future. So I really hope there's gonna be some good news about this down the road. But that was basically comments from the CEO on Bloomberg TV. I haven't seen any kind of written PR at this point. So Jim, what do you think of this NK chart? Because it's kind of pulled back. So can you give us maybe some supports? Oh yeah, this is a perfect example of one of my favorite kind of ways to trade. And I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. But I'm going to pull up the yearly chart first. Time to learn a little lesson here. If nobody's ever traded with me before and not in the room and listen to me talk about this every day. But we did have a nice little breakout here for the last month and a half. It was down here at 95 cents. Kind of found support a few times down there, right around the buck area. Kind of held down there most of the year until about oh it started breaking out right here on 11 19 19 and we had a nice little run up to 182 right about where that 200 ema is and then we had another great run on it and then we've kind of broke that resistance that we had right here at 396 she pulled back to a low support so that 346 is going to be a low 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 support it's going to be the new idea if you see that fall back to that area that's going to be the place to get in. If not, your next support level is going to be right here at the 425 area. And I'm going to turn that in red. Keep that in mind. These red lines mean that's something significant that I want to be looking at. And then we got another support level right here at 489. And that's going to be our, our low, low, low support here on NK. Our, probably our, you know, our, our entry to get in. And just in case it pulls back and gets back in this channel, that's going to be where I'm looking. But I want to see it hold to 488 if it does dip on down there. Down there. Now I'm going to pull this up to the daily one minute and show you an example of one of my favorite trades that I'm kind of kind of appreciate, and that's this 200 EMA on a daily one minute. Many times when I see a breakout like this, and it breaks on up, and it breaks out like that, like it did, and it starts to pull back. We did have a lower low here, and we've had lower highs. And we see the 9 start to creep down over that 34. It can probably turn around and bounce up because this news was good. Or it can pull back to this 200 EMA and create a solid support. I talk about this a lot in the room on breakout stocks when they decide to pull back that 200 EMA on a daily one minute every time frame that on a chart is different on these moving averages but I've come accustomed to using this daily one minute and it will work time you know averages work on any time frame you want it to it's just how they work for you is the best and that you see that first support here at 488 that I called out is pretty much into this 200 EMA so if this stock decides to pull back tomorrow morning or even after hours that would be a good spot to maybe get in the trade and do a 50% retracement. That means take it up halfway and get out of the trade. If you got in it right here at 474, you might want to take it up to six bucks and it might stop right there. We do have a descending pattern, but we also have a fish hook right here. That fish hook pattern right here, and that could go ahead and break up to this next resistance. So low support is going to be the 200 EMA 
or this 488. Second one's going to be the 529, 570, and the resistance that we need to break is going to be right here at 622, 650, and then bring it up to the gap up there at 681. Now, take it, if it does pull back to that 200, take it up for a buck or two. I guarantee it'll bounce back up. And that's NK, and that is it for the market report on Monday, January the 13th, 2020. And always remember, All right. always remember that we do have a link here on Twitter. If you don't want to join the room, you could always follow us here on Twitter. And we have a couple more links on the website to take you to Stock Twits, Pinterest, and our YouTube channel. And if you're listening, please subscribe and smash that bell. Miss Vegas. You know what? I hope everyone had a really good day today. We enjoy doing the videos and hope that uh, it's helping you. So we'll definitely do another one tomorrow. So stay tuned. And if, like Jim said, follow us on our social media because throughout the day, <coughs> excuse me. Oh my God. I hope I'm not getting a cold. Um, I do post uh, when possible and form uh, trading ideas as well. So hopefully um, if you are tuned in to our stock twits and Twitter, uh, you'll get to see them in real time because I try to post them in real time and not after like many people do. So uh, follow, subscribe, smash the like button and i uh, like to see you guys all tomorrow. Have a great night. This is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim and we'll see you tomorrow morning. Please share this video if you like with your friends. Have a great day. We love stocks. Thank you.